Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dilbo Davians. That is Dilbo with a B, and welcome to the MMO Show. This is a weekly MMO series where we talk about news, updates, and all things MMOs. So if you're interested in that style of content, make sure you leave a like, a subscription, and down below, add a comment with your favorite MMO so I can add that to the list of things that I keep my eye on. I also stream on my Twitch channel every single day, 6 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash Dilbo The link is in the description. Come over there, hang out, and talk MMOs with me. Without further ado, let's jump into this week's stories. First up, Elion. Elion recently announced that it is going free to play and changing its release date from September 29th to October 20th. Now, originally Elion was going to be coming out a day after New World. So all in all, I think this is a solid delay just so I can play personally. I can play both of the games without feeling like I have to choose. Now, overall, some of the reasons that they decided to do this delay, one of them was because New World was coming out. They mentioned that they realized that players put a lot of times into the MMO genre and they didn't want to have to make the players choose. And then also there are some bug fixes and other things that they want to change. And with Elion going free to play, that does change up a lot of things for the game. So originally the game was buy to play. And if you bought a copy of the game, now you get 2000 rubies in place of that. And rubies is the in-game cash shop currency. And there was also three other packages you can buy. Each one of those packages correlates with the amount of rubies that you can get. Now, if you did pre-order the game or buy one of the packages, here is the rubies breakdown so you know. The Wayfarer package equals 2,000 rubies. The Wayfarer package and the expansion package is 4,000 rubies. The Wayfarer package and the expedition package is 5,000 rubies. The Wayfarer expansion and expedition package all together is 7,000 rubies. You still also get all the cosmetics that you were going to get with those pre-orders. And also, instead of having all the different packages with different tiered haired starts, now if you pre-order the game in any aspect, or if you buy one of their supporter packs from now until release, you get 72 hours no matter what. Now overall, just quickly, my thoughts on Elion going free to play, and I'm gonna be making an entire YouTube video about this, so make sure you keep an eye on this YouTube channel. Overall, I think it's gonna be a positive thing for the game. Now there are stipulations and bad things that come with free to play. If you're interested in knowing more on why I think it's gonna be a good thing for the game, make sure you're subscribed and keeping an eye out for that video. Also leave a comment down below with your thoughts about Elion going free to play. Next up, probably one of the biggest things in the MMO genre right now, the New World Open Beta just ended. From September 9th till yesterday, September 12th, you were able to participate in the open beta from New World. New World's open beta top Steam charts at 140,000 concurrent players which is an outstanding amount of players trying out the game. Overall, the servers seem to be pretty stable. There are definitely some bugs that are still in the game. And there was a huge balance patch and, and a lot of different changes to how weapons and mobs and, and PVP even works in the game. And if you're interested in hearing more about the specifics to that patch, I have a video, it'll be linked in the eye up above. But overall, my experience with the open beta was that it was a lot of fun. I'm very excited for this game to come out and I don't want to restart it anymore. I want the game to come out already. Overall, across the community, what I've been hearing is that the game is pretty much ready for most people. Now, there are some that would rather the game get delayed again. I don't necessarily think that's needed. I think the game will never be ready if it just continues to get delayed. Let's get it. Let's put it out. Let's start playing it. And let's enjoy some New World. If you're interested in more New World content, I'll be posting a lot of different guides and tips and tricks from now until release. Crowfall and their most recent Founders update has confirmed the layoffs that I talked about in last week's episode, stating that these layoffs were because they were transitioning from full-on development mode to live mode. Now, a lot of people in the community aren't necessarily buying that, including myself. Let's just hope that this information is actually correct and not a smokescreen. Crowfall also extended their buddy program so if you sign up using a buddy's code, for instance, my name, Dilbo Davigans, you can play the game for free for 10 days. And if you do decide to buy it, I can get you 25% off. Link is down below. Now, unfortunately, while this buddy code promotion is going on, even though in the founder updates, they announced that these layoffs don't mean anything, players are still leaving the game drastically right now. One of the biggest guilds, LOD, they just left the game themselves. Server crashes are still happening in large scale fights. And there's a lot of people having a lot of issues with the game currently. I really hope Crowfall can turn around, but looking at this Founders update, it doesn't seem like they have anything massive coming. There's a lot of things in the works and they're continuing to post updates on their forums for different design documents and different design ideas to get community feedback. But it just seems with the layoffs and everything else that's going on with the game, Crowfall is trending in the wrong direction. The Mortal Online 2 stress test was last week and I personally had a great time playing it. It was my first time playing Mortal Online 2 and I'll have an entire first thoughts video on Mortal Online 2 coming out later this month. Mortal Online 2 is a sandbox MMORPG. It's a buy to play game with a monthly subscription. Later in October, it will be going into persistence, which means that the game will no longer be wiped kind of a soft launch early access type of deal on Steam. This trust test was to try to test the servers and they were tested. 
my entire time streaming the game, there was definitely lots of times where the servers went down for updates or, or because the servers did get stressed. Now looking at the Steam charts here, I'm not sure if this is 100% true, but it looks like the all-time peak was only a thousand players. I definitely feel like it was a lot more than that. Looking at Twitch viewer numbers alone, also just noticing how often the servers did go down. I'm excited for more online too. I actually did really enjoy my time with it and I'm excited to keep continuing to play it in the future. Guild Wars 2 just announced a world versus world change that they're gonna be doing. They're gonna be doing what is called a world restructuring update. World restructuring is a feature that aims to address player population imbalances and create great matches. It achieves this by depreciating the current concept of shards, AKA world slash servers, and introducing a matchmaking system to the game mode where players, guilds, and alliances programmatically redistribute to new teams on a set schedule. This gives the developers more flexibility and granularity when creating new teams and helps address this natural fluctuations in population over time. It'll also give players more agency in choosing who they want to play with on an ongoing basis and allows long-standing communities to continue playing together. Matchmaking when teams are destroyed and recreating occurs at the beginning of each season. The term season in this context of World vs. World describes the period of time between each matchmaking event. The length of a season is not yet finalized, but could be up to eight weeks. Before a season begins, players can select which of their current guilds, and by extension the alliance, they'd like to play with for that season. Once matchmaking occurs, any changes to a player selected guild will not take effect until the next season happens. While the composition of each team is static during a season, you'll be matched up against different opponents each week using the existing one-up, one-down matchup system. Active World vs. World players that have not selected a World vs. World guild before the start of the season will be automatically matchmade onto a new team. New players or players that were inactive for an extended period before the start of the season will not be automatically placed, but will have the option to choose which team they like to join. Teams will become locked or full once they've reached the population cap, like the current system. Matchmaking will initially use factors such as World vs. World participation and playtime to place players, guilds, and alliances on teams. The developers are open to adding an additional variables to matchmaking, such as time zone, once they've ironed out the initial kinks of the system. So this is very interesting to me. I'm not a huge Guild Wars fan, but I've wanted to try it multiple times in the past. And with their upcoming expansion, I have given it a thought about maybe jumping into it and seeing what it's like. One of the things that have always kind of turned me off was that World vs. World apparently wasn't something that a lot of people enjoyed. So maybe these changes are something that people are excited about. All right, guys. So that is the end of the MMO show. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and come over to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Dilbo Dabgins and hang out with me. Keep an eye out next week for the next episode of the MMO show. I'll see you guys later. Peace and love, everybody. Peace and love.